now have the Pada Vyakya. So in this retreat, which is a Kirtan retreat, there are no lectures. Nevertheless, we have got three Pads written by Kripaluji Maharaj, which we shall be singing lovingly and then trying to probe into the depth of the wisdom that has been filled in them. So <coughs> the first pad which is being taken today is Murak Nipat Gavar Are Man. If you have Sankirtan Madhuri, I believe it is page 145. Murak Nepat Gawar Ari starts off <coughs> by scolding the mind. This mind is endowed with tremendous potential as the factory of the thoughts within us it can create noble emotions, feelings, sentiments to endow us with happiness, positivity, and hope. We have this amazing machine. It can lift it us up to unbelievable heights. And the saints who conquered this mind, they said that, look, there is nothing wrong in this world. The only thing wrong is with our own mind. People have the nature to do demon hunting. There are many societies that identify demons in the world. They see them as the most dangerous on the planet. And they go around blaspheming and trying to vanquish them without realizing where the real demons are. Vaman Bhagavan in the Bhagavatam said, the actual demons are residing inside us. Because this world is created by God, it is pervaded by God. He is all good and all auspicious. 
and anything that he creates is also good and auspicious. This is the verdict of the Upanishads. Otherwise, there are hundreds of Upanishads. But one mantra of the Ish Upanishad encapsulates the entire philosophy. It says, Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamudachyate, Purnasya Purnamadaya, Purnameva Vashishyate. Bhagavan is so Purna, so complete, so perfect, so much endowed with divine qualities and virtues, that anything which manifests from him is also perfect and complete. Just like if you take from infinity, if you subtract infinity, you are still left with infinity. Likewise, the infinity of God is such that whatever manifests from him is born. And where has this world manifested from? From him, he is the creator, Janma Dhyasyataha. Yato Vaimani Bhutani Jayante Yena Jatani Jivanti. The definition of God in the Vedas is he who has created this world. So since the all-knowing, all-powerful, infinitely compassionate Supreme Father and Mother is the author of this world, then the world is not defective. So what is responsible for our miseries, our anguish? Swamiji, the Padosi, my Nanad sitting in India. The Republicans, no, no, the Democrats. No, 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 the inflation, the deflation. The Vedas say, Isha Vasyamidam Sarvam, O souls, look within yourself. You will find there your biggest enemy. And what is that? Your own mind, the uncontrolled mind. It has the potential to be your best friend if you control it. If you subdue the mind and make it your servant, it will be the best servant in this world. You say, my servant mind create inspirations. Yes. Much better than AI and chat GPT and the rest of them. My dear mind, let me experience happiness. All right, master. That kind of equation when the mind will be possible if it is made a servant. But the unfortunate reality of most of humankind is they have permitted the mind to be the master. Now you ask your mind, my dear mind, what is my mood today? And the mind says, I am in a bad mood. <laughs> Swamiji, I am in a bad mood. What happened? My mind is telling me I'm in a bad mood. This is what happens when you permit this machine the freedom to dictate terms for you. So, <clears throat> the problem is this uncontrolled mind and the potential lies in the controlled mind. Hence, Sri Krishna says, Uddhare atmanam atmanam avasadhayet 
आत्मैव ह्यात्मनो बंधुरात्मैव रिपुरात्मन अर्जुन अपलिफ्ट योर सेल्फ बाय द पावर ऑफ योर माइंड डू नॉट डीग्रेड योर सेल्फ दिस माइंड कैन मेक अस एक्सपीरियंस हैप्पीनेस एंड आल्सो डिस्ट्रेस इट कैन मेक अस हेल्दी एंड आल्सो सिक let us take a look at what else he wishes to say in this murak ne pat gawar ari spoiled yourself and you have spoiled me along with you so what is yourself and what is me he is speaking to the mind so who is this he is speaking to the mind that is the soul the soul unfortunately is tied to the mind 
if the mind was purified, the soul would realize itself independent of the mind. Maharshi Patanjali in his Yoga Sutras, he says, look, the goal of yoga is Chitta Vritti Nirodha, to control the perturbations of the mind. And when you do that, you shall see the self by realization. Just like if there is a glass of water, transparent glass, but the water has got mud mixed in it, you are unable to see through. Take some potash alum and put it in the water. It will settle the mud down and you will get the transparency back. Likewise, this agitated, disturbed mind is not permitting us to see ourselves as separate from it. And hence, in this pitiable state, our consciousness, the consciousness of the soul is tied to the mind. So we are where our mind is. Now the mind is filled with defective attitudes, inability to forgive, harboring of resentment, the disease of me, unnecessary anxiety for the future, stress in the present, lamentation for the past, the disease of envy, so many defective attitudes are there. And these attitudes are hurting us. I once met Kaka Hatrasi. He was a Hindi humor poet, very famous. So he was crying. Actually, I met him first time, you know, at India Gate, in front of Rashtrapati Bhavan. People used to take walks out there. So we were walking together, and from the other side, a mantri was coming. You know, the political ministers in India are called mantris. The mantri was strolling his dog. So Kaka Hatrasi said, Is Gadhe ko kaha le ja rahe ho? Where are you taking this donkey? That mantri said, Are you blind? Can't you see that this is a dog? Kaka Hatrasi said, Who is speaking to you? I am speaking to the dog. Is Gadhe ko kaha le ja rahe ho? The next time I met Kaka Hatrasi, he was crying himself. I said, Kaka, what happened? He said, my elder uncle passed away and left me an inheritance of 20 lakh rupees. Now in the 1970s, it was a huge amount. I said, is that a matter to cry? He said, my second uncle died. He also left an inheritance of 40 lakh rupees. So I said, then what are you crying about? He said, my third uncle died and left an inheritance of 80 lakh. I said, Kaka, we should have a party. <laughs> he said, I don't have any more uncles who will die and leave inheritances. <laughs> so, you can always develop unhappy attitudes and then you can blame the world. Now it is a laughing matter here, but is, it is actually no laughing matter. Because we are harboring these attitudes and making our own selves unhappy. There's lots of people who have come from Florida. 
So earlier on, when I used to go to Florida, Tampa, you know, it was a smaller satsang. So one morning we used to visit, or sometimes in the evening, the, what is the name of the beach? Clearwater? Clear Lake? Clearwater. Clearwater Beach. Sunday evenings they used to have mela there. And there would be a tattoo person who had various options for tattoo. One of the options I saw was born to lose. <laughs> I asked him that why in the world would anybody get themselves tattooed as born to lose? He said, sir, first they tattoo their mind and then they tattoo their body. First, they create this attitude, this mindset that I am born to lose and then they adopt it on their physical body. So these are examples of defective attitudes that we people harbor. But the matter doesn't stop here. If you can detect the mistake, you can correct it. In this case, there is a problem. The problem is that when we have a defective attitude, we don't realize it is our mistake. And we start playing the blame game. Why do you have a defective attitude? Are it is all the fault of my parents. You know, they did not raise me up properly and that is why I'm like this. And somebody else, he says, no, no, my parents were all right. It is the fault of my grandparents. <laughs> it is in my genes. My genes are defective. What to do? The third person says, grandparents are also all right. It was the neighborhood in which I was raised. The environment that created this problem. Everything, but not myself. So we refuse to take responsibility for our emotions. And the problem gets further compounded when we attribute that responsibility to the outside. Meaning that other people are responsible for my bad moods. Which means that for me to now have a good mood other people have to behave differently. For a moment, let us assume that they do behave differently. But this world is in a state of constant flux. The very next moment they'll become different and different, which means that again they will be agitating you. So who can control the externals in this world? If your peace of mind is dependent on the externals, you will always be at the risk of agitation. And that is exactly what is happening. When people detect this agitation, they want to fix the externals. This has to be corrected, that has to be corrected, this has to be corrected. But then, it's a constant struggle. My spouse's behavior has to be corrected. The spouse is all right now, the children are not all right, the children are all right now, the parents are not all right. So this is going on and on and on. And the real culprit is inside. We have not realized the gap the gap between the externals and the internals. Gap means you always have a freedom to choose your emotions, no matter what the externals. One, I had a satsangi in Ahmedabad. His name was Popat Bhai. <laughs> so Popat Bhai, I used to do a lot of prachar in Ahmedabad. And 
I was I did the program in Narunpura in Ahmedabad when I was doing it in Ranip. He came to me completely disturbed. I said, Popat bhai, what happened? He said, Swamiji, gajab ho gaya. <laughs> what happened? My in-laws have come to my house. <laughs> my wife, I can definitely tolerate. <laughs> in-laws, absolutely not. And they have come to stay. So you are, you know, Swamiji, you please share me some way to regain my sanity. I said to him, that do you have dogs in your house? He said, no, Swamiji. I said, Ari Baba, dog is man's best friend. You keep a dog. So he kept some dogs in his house. And he came back to me after three days. I said, are you happy now? He said, Are Swamiji, those dogs are fighting amongst themselves and they are throwing the furniture here and there. Even at night, if a little squirrel comes, they do bahu bahu and wake me up. So now what to do? I said, in that case, you need some parrots. Because they'll replicate the bahu bahu and neutralize it. So he went to the pet shop and he got three parrots and put them there. This time he came back to me in two days panicking. I said, what happened? Hare Swamiji, now what has happened is that the dogs cannot tolerate the parrots. And they are always barking. But the parrots have learnt it. So the parrots are barking in response and the agitation at home has doubled. <laughs> what to do? I said, look, the cow has got the vas of all the devtas inside. And if you do go puja, you receive infinite blessings. So why don't you keep the cow and the calf? He was a shraddhalu. And when I said something to him, he accepted it as the means for welfare. So he went and the famous Gir guy of Gujarat, he brought it home along with the calf. So after one week, he came to me. I said, now what happened? He said, Swamiji, the calf falls sick and then I have to get it uh, treated and then the calf is falling sick, I have to get that treated and the dogs have to keep be kept outside in the calf, uh, <coughs> inside, etc., etc. So I asked you for a solution to my miseries. You have only compounded it all. <laughs> I said, now do one thing. You get rid of the whole zoo. Release the parrots, the cows, the dogs, etc. and come to me. So he freed them all. He donated the cows to some panditji. He let the parrots free. He gave the dogs away in a pet shop. And he came to me. I said, do you have Shanti now? He said, I've got unmitigated Shanti. I said, but your in-laws are still at home. Yes, they are, but I'm still feeling so peaceful. <laughs> Look, I said to him, the situation in your house is exactly the same as it was in the beginning. You were blaming your in-laws for all your miseries, but the in-laws are still there and you are unmiserable. That means there is a gap between the externals and your emotions. The moment you realize this gap, you are set free from the bondage of emotions. Without realizing it, you remain like a slot machine. What is a slot machine? Controlled from the outside? You put the coin, ding dong, ding dong, cling clong, cling clong. Likewise, people's emotions are at the disposals of external things. 
If the weather is okay, then I will be okay. But the Bhagavad Gita gives us another option. It says you must carry your weather with you wherever you go. This is the concept of Sthita Pragya. Who is Sthita Pragya? Who has learned to free their mind from the externals. And thereby, now they are at the freedom to choose their emotions, their feelings, their thoughts. And they can let their mind soar to the greatest heights. So what Kripaluji Maharaj is saying here is, my dear mind, you are still, first of all, you have got defective attitudes. And second, you are not realizing. You are blaming externals for your defective attitude. So the question of self-improvement is not arising. It will all begin with the mindset. What mindset? Of taking responsibility for your sentiments. I just completed a course at IIT Delhi as visiting faculty, teaching the students this very point. The second mindset, take responsibility for your emotions. So, <coughs> let's move ahead. We'll sing this line again and then go ahead. Murak. Nipat Gavar Ari
गवार हरी says my dear mind you have been wallowing in the most despicable of things the most despicable is what we produce every day and so do the creatures excreta so the saints call sensual enjoyment as excreta but some people say that is really very powerful words used so many people consider it so wonderful to have delectable ice creams and chocolates to eat to have the pleasures of the senses why in the world should it be excreta well <coughs> from one perspective it may be but when you go to a a different perspective you say oh my god what in the world is this indra is the king of the celestials but once he committed an offense to his guru and brihaspati cursed him to become a hog on the earth plane so indra became a pig now you would think that he would develop loathing for his despicable life environments but he did not because there was this attractive female pig out there and indra said wow she is so charming and giving so much of pleasure to my senses and contemplating happiness in the female pig indra's mind got attached now the matter did not stop there because biology took its course and slowly little piglets appeared in the world so now indra had six piglets and the attachment multiplied so indra now of course in the us pigs are well looked after but not in india in india you know the pigs they are always in the dirtiest of sewers and gutters etc so indra was eating that excreta the king of the celestials and his absence in swarg had created great distress the administration of the devatas was affected so the devatas came to indra and said what are you doing here why don't you come back indra said why should i come back when i have got all these attractions here disneyland universal studios <laughs> he flat refused the devata said now he is attached to his children so they killed one few of them the devatas to get him back for a higher cause but he produced more children so they killed some more than he produced more they said you know you have to kill his wife now they killed his wife and indra was in mourning for 3 days but then the his other companion pig said why don't you just marry again <laughs> so the problem continued and the devtas didn't know what the solution is until one of them brihas saraswati said look his actual attachment is to the body you finish off his body so they tore apart indra's body and now he emerged and he said what in the world was i doing so he could see 
that this was a pleasure that could be equated to excreta. But at that time, he was unable to realize. So, Sri Maharajji is scolding the mind because the mind is material. <coughs> and the mind has the body at its disposal. So, the mind is seeking bodily pleasures. And even in that, if that was the case, it would not be too bad. But it is a moving target. Means all of us, we are not really looking after excreta, but whatever be the case, we all have a destination disease. And the destination disease makes us think there will be happiness. I am only living in Waco. If I could live in Dallas, I would be happy. I am living in Dallas. If I could be in New York, I could be happy. You know, it goes on and on and on. The grass is always greener on the other side. People in the city are thinking, that city life, this concrete jungle, if I could be in the village, I would be happy. You know, before the insurgency started off in Kashmir, in the early 1970s, I had gone, we used to go for tourism there, have a great time. So there was this dull lake, and they used to have houseboats, etc. And lots of people go from Delhi for vacations. So I got to speaking to one of the boatmen who was taking care of that houseboat, they used to call it. And he said, why do you people come here from Delhi? I said, why, you know, such wonderful scenery and such ex nice, serene environment. He said, it's, it's so despicable. We all want to go to Delhi. So the people in Srinagar are thinking there is no happiness here, it must be in Delhi. And the people in Delhi are thinking how can there be any happiness out here, it must be in Srinagar. So it goes on and on and on. Are you happy? Are Swamiji, I am only a deputy director. When I become a director, I will be happy. That Bhatkan has gone on Maharajji says, since ages, since lifetimes. At the end of it, if a decision could be made, that there is no happiness in this direction, then you would turn around and move for the real happiness. But when the decision is not made, then journey just continues ad infinitum. And the culprit is the mind. The mind should be controlled by the intellect. The intellect should analyze and decide where is the happiness I want. Now when the intellect abrogates its right, the mind's hold increases. The mind says, this will give me happiness, that will give me happiness. And we say, yes, Swamiji, my mind is saying that this will give me happiness. Swamiji, my mind is saying that comfortable circumstances will give me happiness. There should be no challenges, no difficulties. So your mind is your best friend, right? Kripaluji Maharaj says, absolutely not. Manako mano shatru saki sunahu jani kachu pyare. Are human beings, this mind is your enemy. Don't listen to it. The art of auspicious, effective work is to make the mind listen to your intellect. If you listen to the mind, it will always suggest low-grade pleasures, comfort. 
low value work and the intellect will guide you towards purpose in life towards high value activities towards the ultimate goal of your soul so the problem has been that we have not seen we have not called out the mind as our enemy we have befriended it and that is what now needs to be corrected one saint said every morning when i wake up i take a slipper and hit my mind a hundred times that is not literally figuratively i will not listen to this mind today then you go by your values by your higher purpose you do the more difficult thing not the easier thing why because you have refused to give space to this mind and the problem is if you give it an inch it will demand the mile and it has got five friends of it the five senses so all together this is a very potent recipe that has kept us bound in material existence and in the process we have missed out something very valuable what is that let's see we'll sing this line and then move ahead ko murak ne pat gawar re man other side is radha ji and shri krishna who are eager to bestow so many gifts to us if we become more aware of the gifts we have received 
we will automatically realize how merciful they are. And then be eager to go in their direction. That is why one of the most powerful positive sentiments is gratitude. The word gratitude comes from the Latin word gratia, which means gift. To realize that you have received gifts from God. We all have but we are taking them for granted. If we could just be more cognizant of this, He has given me the gift of life, the earth to walk upon, the air to breathe. Then we would be filled with positivity. Our whole perspective would change. Martin Seligman's experiment was, is very popularly quoted. He took 47 clinically depressed patients who were on drugs. He took them away from drugs and asked them for the next three months simply to note down three things they were grateful for in their life and to contemplate about it through the day. So just by turning their attention to what positivity they had in their life, he was able to pull them out of clinical depression in the space of three months. 90, he got a 94% success rate. Why is it? Because the reason why people go into depression is they reach this triple conclusion I have not done anything right in my life. The world is inherently unhelpful and malevolent. My future is all dark. When the intellect reaches these three wrong decisions when the intellect creates these three wrong beliefs, then the person enters depression. And gratitude cuts at the root of these beliefs. Gratitude makes us realize that I have received goodness either from God or from the universe or anybody else who did not need to give it, but have given me some gift and makes us realize that there is goodness in this world. And that one little bit, this change in belief, creates such a huge difference. Now if you start repeatedly contemplating the graces you have got from God, you will develop love for him. But <coughs> so many people take those graces for granted. This is the tenth apple effect. One person, traveler, got lost in the forest. And for two, 48 hours, he had nothing to eat and he was saying, Oh God, oh God, please help me get some food. Until finally he spied an apple tree. He was saying, Thank you God, thank you God, you are so kind. He had one apple. Now he was a little less thankful to God. And then he had a second apple. And his sense of gratitude reduced a little more. And then he had his third apple. And by the time he had ten apples and was satiated, he was no longer thankful to God. And you say, does that happen? It does. It happens to all of us and the best of us. In the last 60 years in the U.S., the real income after discounting for inflation has increased two to threefold. 
the life span expected life expectancy has also increased tremendously the average house size after second world war has gone from 1100 square feet to 2300 square feet but are people thanking god for the graces they have received it's the 10th apple effect whatever we have it is entitled we take it for granted what we don't have we are focused on that so we are focused on what we don't have and we are taking for granted what we have you know in the frisco school once what happened was that on sunday afternoon some youngsters they thought of a prank and they took three goats on one goats back they wrote painted the number 1 on the second they painted the number 2 and on the third they painted the number 4 and they released the goats in the school courtyard now the goats being unintelligent creatures they went wherever one found its way to the chemistry lab one to the principal's office and one to the gen the boys restroom but next monday morning when people started coming to school they found goat droppings all over the place and then they realized that something is wrong the alarm was raised catch these creatures where are they they managed to find goat number 4 and also goat number 2 and also goat number 1 but now the panic button was hit harder where is goat number 3 the principal said the matter is serious i am cancelling classes for today everybody go home we have to search for goat number 3 the fact is was there any goat number 3 there was none but they were panicking because they could not find it so likewise we all have got this same problem the missing goat in our life how can i be happy until i can find goat number 3 <laughs> so despite all these blessings we are still unable to feel gratitude towards god and this is the wrong belief system this is the cause of our negative thoughts <clears throat> it needs to be carefully replaced through knowledge and understanding and deep thought look i have got this blessing this blessing this blessing now imagine such a wonderful temple such an opportunity to do sadhana such wonderful kirtans such an amazing environment if we contemplate deeply we'll say bhai hamari to lottery khul gayi what else do you need so nobody sitting in this room should ever stop thanking god so it is our own lack of contemplation that forces us either into the 10th apple effect or the missing goat effect and that is why we don't realize their kindness shri maharaj ji is saying that radha rani has been waiting for you and you have not gone to her so let us sing the last two lines and come to a conclusion murak ne pat gawar are Oh, oh, oh.
cautioning us that first of all realize the error correct it and be quick about it don't postpone very often people understand what is to be done but then they postpone and in doing so the opportunity slips out of the hand and the opportunity here is tremendous what is it the human form we have received this human form is desired even by the celestials gayanti deva kila geeta kani because this is the free will zone this is the one species in 8.4 million where we have the faculty of knowledge and the ability to do works by our own free agency as well and both these points are required for god realization so the supreme goal can only be achieved in the human form but the problem is it is passing away and we are not realizing it every morning when you wake up god gifts you with 1400 and 20 minutes to utilize or to waste as you choose those who use their time well they move rapidly ahead those who are careless they fritter away this opportunity one gentleman when he became 55 years old he realized that an indian male would have an expected life expectancy of 75 years and i'm already 55 So he said 75 years means 3900 Saturdays is the total i would expect 
3,900 Saturdays. And by the age of 55, 2,900 Saturdays have passed away. I now have only a thousand Saturdays left. So he decided to be more conscious. He made a big jar and put a thousand balls in it. And every Saturday he would take one ball out. One Saturday less remaining. And if he reached the age of 75 and continues to live, then every Saturday is a bonus. So this care for time is the quality of a good sadhak. A good sadhak is one who is very mindful of the value of time in the human form. So that is what Kripaluji Maharaj is saying that look, the human form you are taking it for granted, there is no guarantee you will receive it the next time again. Our Hindu philosophy is not of one lifetime but many lifetimes. We existed before birth and we shall exist after death. So is it that all human beings will become human beings next time? Absolutely not. You could go in any species of life, hinataram vishanti. So this big danger exists. Hence Kripaluji Maharaj says, be mindful. And remember, tomorrow is also Saturday. So, time is passing by. Let us see his last, final message in this pad. Murak ne pat gawar Shri Krishna, without sadhan they melt and bestow their grace. Without sadhan. So hearing that our ears rise without sadhan, Swamiji, then we don't need to do any sadhan problem solved. <laughs> See, the problem is that presently we are a sadhan yukt. We have all these egos and attachments and he says you give it all up the aim of sadhana is not that by my claim to grace is not my sadhana Shri Krishna I did 100 Ashwamed Yagyas grace me Shri Krishna I did one Japa grace me Shri Krishna, I did 25 crore Gayatri, you grace me. This sadhan is not a price for the grace. The sadhan is to enable us to become sadhanheen, to realize our humble state. 
the aim of sadhan is to empty out the heart from all the designations and to realize our complete dependence upon him and then he will grace us so to think by sadhan i will attain him is wrong the aim of sadhan is to eradicate it all from the mind and then when you call out like a little child calls for the mother <coughs> the little child does not believe it has got sadhan mummy i have got this degree please give me milk the child only knows i am hungry i need my mother and it cries out and the mother responds so god says i don't need any sadhan from you you become like that little child and cry out for me so the aim of sadhan is to reach that state and if you say that god needs something from me he says all i need is your mind you give me your mind that is it now giving the mind we give the mind to him and he graces us this becomes causeless grace supposing a washerman comes to your home and says i'll wash all the dirty clothes of your family really yes give it he washes and brings them back how much for it nothing nothing hey you are such a nice kind hearted man you did it free so likewise god says surrender your mind our mind that was dirty be spoiled since endless lifetimes we surrendered it to him and he cleaned it up endowed it with divine love divine knowledge divine bliss and gave it back to us now supposing god says give me something for washing your mind are half rate 25% something we'll say my lord what do we have to give you everything is yours in any case the whole world so he is causelessly merciful and the aim of sadhan is to become sadhan hin so kripalu ji maharaj says who can be more generous than that lord quickly convince your intellect and go surrender to him radhe 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 govind govind radhe radhe
सियावर राम चंद्र की जगत गुरु श्री कृपाल जी महाराज की भक्ति कीर्तन रिट्रीट की राधा कृष्ण मंदिर की जय जय श्री राधे जय जय श्री राधे जय जय श्री राधे Radhe 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 What a blissful